Finally Friday. Finally. We're it's almost, nice. We're almost nice done. Nice to be almost done. Well, how's life been treating you? It's been pretty good. We uh staying busy. Looks like the sun's gonna come out and and grace us this weekend with nice weather, so we'll see. Looking forward to that. I know it. Um, Y'all started ball yet? We've got a pre-tournament this weekend. Um, our middle child was supposed to have practice last night, but they uh, it got rained out. So we're hoping that she'll really take to it this year. But um, I think she'll have fun. She likes to run around. She likes to play outside. So we'll see how that goes. That's good. We had our first practice uh, Tuesday. It was an adventure. Is it? Organized yeah. chaos is what it was. But Yeah, well, and that's our, our middle child still in the age to where um, that's pretty much what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not really um, any true outs or anything like that. Yeah. There's, it's more or less get up there, hit the ball. Um, I think that's where the, the start of the love of the game really starts mm -hmm. um, because <clears throat> It's so easy to get frustrated when you're swinging at a ball and you miss it. Yeah. So to get it to where their first two years is they're hitting it off Just the tee, fun, yeah. it's fun to hit it off the tee and run. And then, so we, you get that love built for it. That way you don't lose it. Same instance, you know. True. We've all seen the videos where they go out there and uh, they try to practice with them, and after a couple of misses, they throw the bat down and run off. Yeah. Uh, I can understand that, you know, try a couple of times and then you just can't do it. Well, I suck at this, I hate this sport kind of thing. What so. we did, we took the ones that could hit really well. You know, we, everybody got the bat, and then we had a couple that struggled, you know, and then we kind of took them off to their side and the, the whole team was practicing together, and then the ones that needed that one-on-one, -on -one, we give it to them, and it made a big difference. Like. We had some that barely could bump it off the tee, and then by the end of the night, we was hitting it past the the circle. So, see, and that's I'm glad progress. that there's there's actually some practice going on in that um, league or age group too, mm -hmm. because I have seen it to where there's, you know, they're, they they're scheduled practices, but really all you're doing is going up there and they're running around the field, and there's no really, hey, we're gonna try to help you run towards the ball and yep. not be afraid of the ball. Um, and hitting and stuff like that because when they get in coach pitch like i said a while ago if if you've if you've helped them none if they haven't grew any well then now's the time that they're going to get frustrated with it mm -hmm. um and that's why we cruel. just try to keep it fun and tee yeah. ball like we haven't even started running bases yet like yeah. we don't even know about first second or third base yeah well, you know our first year kids but we'll worry about that after we we get the batting and we learn what to do with the ball when we get it. So in about three years, we're going to have a, a, a coach pitch coach. Then you're going to move up. You're going to, you're going to go every stage with her. Or? We'll see. We'll see. I'm not coach material, so I haven't. I've, I've always gone to the games, but I'm not coach time. material. Um, had a great time. It's more fun to me, I believe, than it is them. Well, and, and see, that's I mean, that's a good part of it too. We, uh, I enjoy watching it. I just, yeah. I'm that type of person well here let me just show you you know let me take it away from you so <laughs> if you're one of these that can coach i, I hey i'm proud that you're all here because i can't but. it will teach you patience for sure well look who's on the truck today What's up? tailgate tech they come to hang out with us and check out the matco stuff matco stuff well i got three different um items that we're going to talk about this week okay um you know there's going to be one that's a diagnostic tool that's just yep. i like diagnostics so we're going to go into that but also two other areas um, one of them is not necessarily a new tool we've had it forever but it's going to, well actually two of them is save my butt kind of stuff so we'll go to the diagnostic first um it's going to be the relay bypass switch yeah these come with a loop um we talked about the amp clamp that last week uh, a lot of people was telling different stuff uh, about the amp clamps and and how they use them and what they're great for so these are the next item in that line if you've got um, really and truly parasitic draw or anything like that this yep. is a great way to kind of narrow it down also mm -hmm. um, but it also kind of it, it paints you that picture of what's going on uh, and that's that's key when it comes to electrical we've all talked about laying the sheets out and taking a highlighter yep. and following the circuit and all that 
this is just another item that will paint that picture uh, but it also has a you don't necessarily have to buy these for the loop you know they have the ones that don't have the loop but they don't have that capability of using the loop at that point later right. on so these you, you can use it to cut it on or off uh, ac systems fuel pumps really anything that has a relay and mm -hmm. there's a bunch of them in your car so uh <laughs> they all got different stuff you know so the fact that that these let us go a little bit further in the diagnostic i really like them i also like them just for the pact again of being able to cut stuff on if you have a scan tool that'll do it that's great but mm -hmm. sometimes it's hard to run back and forth now with scanners they're going more to the bluetooth capability so you can have the scanner out uh, that's great as well but sometimes the communication is broke between the computer telling the relay to come on. Right. So this just tells me right away, well, I'm telling it to come on, it's not on. We've all done it with a fuel pump or an AC compressor. Well, I'm telling it, we replace that component and guess what? It didn't fix it. It doesn't fix it. Yep. The scanner lied, the, the, the <laughs> computer that tells all lied. <coughs> right? That's the customers think we should just plug it in and it tells us what's wrong. But that this would eliminate that. That's just exactly something else right. to keep comebacks from coming, you know, which that shouldn't leave the bay, but I, we all know those techs that just throw apart on it, don't even test it. So that's the first one we've been showing a lot this week. The next one is going to be the tw uh, twisted hex. Um, these here are really main to remove your damaged um, your hex or just screws or anything that you need to get out. They're twisted on the ends. Uh, I sold a set yesterday, so the open set I've been showing got sold, but we'll open it up and look at them. So that's like y'all's answer to Max RBRT stuff then, pretty much. I don't know that that's what they classified it at, but that's what I'm going to sell it as. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, if it removes a rounded yeah. hex, that's, that's where it's at. Um, I actually don't know that I've... Um, I don't know if this is a good thing to say or not. I don't know that I've ever seen, ever seen the Max. Um, RBRT? R, yeah. yeah it's I know awesome now. when we had the meetup, I know they had a table full of them over yeah. there and they were selling them like hotcakes. But Speaking I never. Speaking of the meetup, are y'all going to be here this year? Because yeah. we've had a bunch of people last, like is Matco Michael coming? Yeah, we'll be here at the meetup for so, sure. I hope to God Matco <laughs> gets y'all some blue tools this year. Cause Luckily enough, that's uh, been like everybody's thing. I know one person said, I hope he's got to send them blue grinders. Definitely have so. blue grinders. Um, and the blue pry bars have been taken off. And they do have this one. You said you saw this. Did you see this one in the blue the other day? Speaking um, of cool, check that shirt out. Yeah, this is uh, some of the shirts we sell. What better way than to sell a shirt than have it on, right? Yeah, I got two cool ones so. on. Yeah, um, she's oh. actually got two of those, I think three so pretty cool stuff uh one of them's inside signed by um and antron and so but yeah that's the little set i like the magnet on there as well and then you have the twisted there uh the key to using anything extractor wise is that the point that it starts slipping stop and yeah. get the extractor that you've bought to do that with uh, i can't tell you how many times we've had um when I was a tech, a newer tech or just the old stubborn tech that uh, knows all best, but that just keep going with an impact or, or screw gun, whatever it might mm -hmm. be. And that's, I, I'm not touched talking about this style. I'm talking about the regular extractors as well. Um, don't just take everything off so it's a complete circle because then you're right. almost asking the impossibility, you know. Well, what I've noticed too, a lot of people will try to use, you know, not just these, but a regular hex or whatever and they don't seat it all the way to the bottom. If it's got grease and crap in there, they just set it on top of it and try to roll with it. Well, and I don't know that uh, the manufacturers would agree with me here either, but if I have something that's rounded, I don't want to take the one that just fits in there. I'm gonna get the bigger one and beat it in there. I want, yeah. I want to get my socket or my uh, bit stuck. Yep. Like, I yep. want to have to take it to the vise and Pull wiggle it, it back and forth mm -hmm. to get it off. Uh, and I can't make people understand that well, a lot of people say, well, I, you know, I just need the standard hex or I just need the metric. Sometimes that neck size up and the standard or the metric, like if you got a standard, maybe you need to move up to the neck size up in the metric and you drive that joker in there with a hammer and most of the time you get it out. Yeah. Know? 
Well, and that's the thing, and, and that's what I've had to show people, uh, especially in exhaust work, not with these, of course, but with the regular extractors, as I call them. They, um, the exhaust is bad about rounding, and when they call me over to help them, they're at the point of fixing to cut it off, and, and that's great if we have it in stock to, to put it back. But right. if we don't have it in stock, we just need to get it out so we can put a different bolt in it. Exactly. Um, the main thing is stop before it completely is a mm -hmm. circle. And then also, you're taking that extractor and you're stepping it up each time it rounds. Well, beat one on there. Exactly Don't use the right. one that goes on. <laughs> yeah. If it goes on, what's it? I mean, it's holding on just to that. You've already got it to a circle now. It's it's got Drive just a little joker bit of. Joker in there. I want to I want to force it on there and and cuss to get it off because yeah. I can get that off at any time. The car can leave. Yeah. But cool little design. Um, I've actually when I went to pull them out before pulled the. You know, y'all's are made like this. The I've actually pulled the this bit. part out of the socket part. You know, and like, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm fine with that as well. And I, I think that I like that. I like that it's not made as one. Yeah. Because now I can have an extra uh, bit or something mm -hmm. in stock. Uh, I haven't tried to order an extra bit, but that just came to me when you said that. That maybe if we offer the extra bits to have a couple, because who might not just buy an extra bit just for okay well i know i want to drive this in yeah. sometime if it messes it up or if it wears mm -hmm. i can i can drive that bit out put me a brand new one get that car out and hand it to my macro guy when he comes so there you go neat little design um pretty cool those are around. good rails on those too nice rail. yeah have you talked about those other mm -hmm. uh well these these are pretty cool y'all see them coming in the future pretty pretty cool little rail and then next thing, like I said, this is not new by any means. It's just a, it's a re-threader. Why you need a re-threader? A tap and die set. Yep, I know. Um, <laughs> I've heard that a bunch of times. Like, why do I need that? I got a re-threader. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, it's a little different. All right. So here's the thing. If you can go to your tap and die set, I know there's tap and die sets out there that's bigger than normal tap and die set. If you got them just laying around, okay. But the normal uh, technician doesn't. These are big for like spindles. Um, you've got, whether it be spindles, uh, tie rod ends, um, axles, it's got, it's four sided, so it's got different uh, sizes. Uh, like this one's one, uh, 1.5, this is three, two, and one. And then over here, you're gonna have like 0 0.75, 1.75, 2.5, you get it. There's, there's different sizes. Right. Uh, of course, the handle comes off and flips over, so we're not tearing up our hand. I can't tell you how many times I've seen somebody using it like this without the thing on it. Put the thing on it so you don't hurt your hand. But mainly, if that axle nut comes off and, and, and boogers it up a little bit, uh, I don't know all the brands that's, uh, that's bad about it, but I know Toyota's, you got to de-stake it. And if you're not really careful, it will tear the nut up and then next thing you know, all the way off the axle's damaged. The Toyota techs know what I'm talking about. They sell a special uh, well, they don't sell. You're supposed to have one in your required tools at Toyota for to destake it. It's steel. If you're not careful, when it comes off, all the way off, it's just messing the threads up. So instead of having to put a brand new axle in it, and in this day and time, it's hard to get parts. So yep. are we gonna have an axle? <clears throat> this will actually, if you stop in time and correct the issue and don't completely take the, uh, the threads off, this will clean them up. Mm -hmm. So, and also if it's if it's not messed up at the beginning but it's messed up in the very back or something like that um, that's great but if it's messed up from the very get-go when you're trying to start mm -hmm. your um, tap and die sets sometimes it's hard yep. these here clean it up enough to where i can get a good you have to have some type of thread there mm -hmm. or at thread, least the first thread. start yeah, yeah, yeah you know it has to it has to be there so um, if this can sit down and find just a little bit you can take it and really clean it up, get that axle nut back on, fix the mistake that was supposed to get really bad. Right. Um, and honestly, if if it's messed up from the get-go, okay, I understand, but as techs, if we mess it up, we need to fix it, right? We don't mm -hmm. need to We don't need to charge the customer uh, for a part that they didn't do. You know, if I didn't de-stake it enough, well, that's my fault, not, right. um, not theirs. And, and same goes to really any of that. But also, um, you know, when you do, um, different types of, of reasons to have to hit the spindle to break the 
uh, ball joints loose or anything like that. I know they make pullers and stuff too, but most people is going to take a hammer and hit it, break it loose. If you mess up and hit those threads, this is going to clean it up so that, mm -hmm. uh, now I'm not telling you you can beat the crap out of it and deform it and then still do it. Hopefully it works. Yeah. These here can really be uh, a, a saver. I can't tell you how many axles that I've set over there and they used and they still do. They sell the axle re-threaders that it goes on in two pieces and a socket mm -hmm. goes over it. Those things are high. You gotta have one for every size. So as long as I can use one of these and clean it up, get the axle nut, get it back going, this is where I'm gonna go. So two really save my butt kind of scenarios. This is gonna save it if I use the wrong size and rounded it, or it's also gonna save it if I'm on commission and I need to get this job done and it just keeps on going and going and going. Right. So you got the part number on that one. The part number on the re-threaders is right here. All right. And I don't know if we showed the part number on this, but if we didn't, somebody would tell us. So there's the part number on that. There you go. So that's kind of the three areas. It's kind of, you know, there's a bunch of other neat little tools that do it. But for the for this week, this is what we've been talking about to everybody. Good deal. All right, guys. Like always, uh, the meetup this year is going to be Memorial Day weekend. That Saturday, Matt and Michael will definitely be here. We got a lot of cool giveaways this year. We've been blessed with some uh, some good stuff. So well, that's it. Y'all show up. I think it's the 28th. I believe is when it is. The Saturday, of the 28th, and uh, Tailgate Tech will be here signing autographs as always. Um, if you want to see a good time, bring a bottle of Tito's, and uh, he'll show you how it works. Yeah, Tito may have snuck across the border a couple months ago. He coming back. He might be. He, <laughs> he, he's still in hiding, but he, he might be out for a little bit. Maybe he'll show up that, that weekend. Maybe. That's funny. All right, guys. Like always, thanks for hanging out with us. Hey, it's Friday. Y'all enjoy your weekend. Hit that thumbs up, check over here for merchandise, cool tools and discount codes down here. If you're not subscribed, click that button. You guys have a great weekend. See ya.